Digital Rights Management, or DRM, is a tool that copyright owners use to protect their content. It's on music, movies, and video games. Basically, DRM's purpose is to limit the consumer's ability to control their media. On Tuesday, Steve Jobs, CEO of Apple, suggested in an open letter to the music industry that DRM be completely eliminated from all forms of music distribution. The big four music labels, Sony BMG, EMI, Warner Music, and Universal Music, have a stranglehold on their content and have always maintained that all digital downloads of music need to be protected by some form of DRM. Jobs argues that DRM has never worked and 90% of total music sold doesn't have any form of DRM within it. Is DRM a necessary evil? Or is Steve Jobs now the chosen one for consumer rights in the digital age? Totally DRM free, it's The Loop. Joining us tonight from the CNET studios in San Francisco, Miss Veronica Belmont, and from our nation's capital, Michael Bebel, president and CEO of Ruckus Network, which is a legal music downloading service that is free to all college students. We know they need that. Thank you guys for joining us in the loop. Veronica, I'd like to start with you. Steve Jobs, is he crazy or is he totally on point with saying we need to get rid of DRM? Well, I can't comment on the crazy part, but I think he's absolutely right on getting rid of DRM. It's about time that someone with his stature started saying something like that. But isn't he one of the people who really pioneered DRM? I mean, his is the most popular at this point. Well, he did DRM because the record labels wouldn't sell their music online if he didn't. They wanted the DRM because they worried they wouldn't make any money off of digital music. Right. Now, Michael, you, you've got a service that sounds like you're trying to do the right thing. You're, you're trying to pretty much give away music. Without DRM, that couldn't exist, right? Yeah, the way our music service works, uh, we can offer uh, a free service to college students across the country. We've got two and a half million songs available. You can download as many as you'd like, play them as often as you want, fully on demand, and free under an ad-supported model. Free to the students, free to the university. They are DRM protected, but think of us as a celestial jukebox. Without DRM, we couldn't do it. Well, now, here's the thing, though, though Michael. 90% of all music sold, at least according to Mr. Jobs, is DRM-free. So if that's how the majority of the stuff we're listening to comes packaged, why do we really need it? Well, in my case, I can distribute this content digitally with DRM, and then there are many opportunities to extend that business model in different directions. Without DRM, if I were distributing open MP3s, there's no extension to the business model. What Steve was referring to was the fact that CDs are an open format. Well, CDs are going to go the way vinyl went and eventually go away, and it's going to be down online distribution only. DRM is an enabler of many different business models online. Well, Veronica, like mine. Michael's business model is one thing, but what, what about something like a Napster to go where it's all the music you want or a Zoom business model where it's share your songs wirelessly, but there obviously have to be limitations. Those couldn't exist without well, right. DRM. Don't we, don't we need that for these, these kind of services to thrive? I think they're a really great way to test out music and to try something out. But if you want to keep your whole music collection, you're going to want to use your media the way you want to use it. And you just can't do that with restrictive DRM. There's no two ways well, the about issue, it. Well, the issue, the issue there, though, isn't DRM. It's interoperability. I'm on record publicly over the history of my career saying the issue with DRM is interoperability. If everybody keeps a proprietary DRM, it'll never work. There has to be... So are you be, saying that there should be one DRM for all, all music that everyone puts well, out? There could be one DRM. There could be many DRMs with a language that overlays the top of them that makes them ubiquitous and seamless for transfer so between one or the other. So then why not just make everything DRM free? Because do you think that everyone will pay for their music if it's DRM free? I think history has proven that's not the case. But, but Michael, I think the whole reason there's so much piracy is because that people are trying to find ways to use the media the way they want. That's because there's so much I, DRM. That's why I, so I agree. Piracy. I agree, but the issue isn't DRM or no DRM. The issue is interoperability. If the content from my service could go onto the iPod, no one would need to hack it. Well, Michael, I can't but, do but that. Haven't they tried that in the past? Hasn't, haven't, haven't, like, like, let's say Microsoft. They tried coming up with a DRM, licensing it out to other music stores. It was cracked within months, and it became a huge hassle. And Steve Jobs himself said, we'd like to give out fair play, but we think it would, it would ruin the experience for our customers and be an impossible nightmare for everybody. 
Well, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's one man's opinion and statement. Any DRM worth a grain of salt is renewable technology. The, anything can be hacked. Even the best security used by our government can be hacked. Mm -hmm. the, the key to making it successful is renewability. Steve talked about that in his open letter. Microsoft has enabled that in their DRM. So it can be cracked and it can be fixed. And it'll be cracked again and it'll be fixed again. The issue isn't so whether or not the security... doesn't it seem pointless to just continue that whole cycle? That's what, that's what many are saying, Veronica, is that, is that why do we want this whole give and take, wait and patch approach? But let me ask you this, uh, Veronica. So, if, if, there was, if there was DRM for guys like Michael so they could run their services, which I, I think is a fantastic service, and then the music that you purchased online came DRM-free since you're legally paying for it, would that make you mm -hmm. okay? Would that, would that be fine in this, in this day and age? That would be a model that I would be okay with as a temporary fix. Yes. As a temporary fix. All right, well, tell me, permanent <laughs> fix then. Uh, Veronica, what needs to happen? What has to change? And very quickly, uh, what, what needs to go on in the next five, ten years or so to make digital downloading the primary source for music? Well, I think that people need to understand that if they want to support the artists that they love, they need to pay for music. I mean, it's one thing to give someone a file and be like, hey, check this song out, and then they go and buy the whole album. Like, people need to take a little bit more responsibility for the music that they have, and if you want to support the industry, that's how you're going to do it. All right, but Michael, we've being, got seconds. I, I want to get the last word from you, sir. What do you think needs to happen in the next five or ten years to make digital downloading the primary source? Honestly, I think that if we made the solution technically ubiquitous, meaning I buy a song from from service A and it works on party wise portable player or phone or whatever device you want to put it on then nobody's going to care about DRM it's right. just going to be seamless and in the background all right I want to thank you both Miss Veronica and Michael for keeping us in the loop it's funny because the songs that I grabbed from BitTorrent they totally work on all my players and on my home stereo it's really really odd the way that works but think about this here's a message if you will to the music industry and to Hollywood we get it we understand it you guys made the stuff you want to get paid for it that's fair. Just let me do what I want with it. If I pick up a Kelly Clarkson track from iTunes, don't tell me that I can't edit it into a home movie or that I can't put it on a non-Apple approved MP3 player and that I can only share it with five people and then uh, I'm going to hell. Look, until the media companies start treating us like customers and a little less like ex-cons, we're just going to keep finding ways around it. Sorry. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.